This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. And a big warm welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry Weekend Podcast, where it's the King George, uh, amongst other races this weekend. Obviously, King George taking centre pl- uh, centre stage. And uh, with me this evening are uh, three uh, terrific flat judges. John Lang, good evening, John. Just a real. <laughs> <laughs> and also Quentin Franks and, and, and Nick Davis. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, Good evening. <laughs> There's the echoes here that John might be on a promise tonight, you know. So we, we, we'll, 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 we'll ask him how that goes on the sermon uh, tomorrow, um, or Sunday, rather. Uh, right, on to, on to the uh, best bets action uh, for this week. Uh, this is where we give our three best bets before going on to the television action and discussing some of the TV races uh, to, in order to help you either press pink or blue. So um, we go to our third best bet. Uh, Nick Davis, I'm coming straight to you for your third best. It's a tough job this week because there's, uh, despite the fields, there's some very uh, moderate racing, especially yep. at HQ. Mm. Uh, I've gone for my third best in the Skybet Dash, and it's Scatha. Now, I think he gets a lead here from Hyper Focus. The York runs have been very good. 2 1, big field looks good. Uh, last time, you know, he's going for his hat trick, and they took the pieces off, and he was held up. I mean, it was just a bit strange from his previous proof two runs where he's been up there. So I think he gets a well, lead from a lead or be up there with hyper focus, and uh, I can see him hanging on here. Interesting. I mean, I mean, he, he, he was like a cannonball uh, when it won on the eighth of July. Yeah, just it absolutely blitzed them. Um, yeah, why was he held up at last time out? Yeah, very strange. Um, yeah, and the pieces back on. Yeah, yeah, took the headgear off as well. Yeah, it's quite odd. They, they might, they might be thinking he's a bit, bit of a monkey, and, and sort of thinking just keep him sort of guessing what's going to be on next because I, I see they've had the visor on. But um, interesting choice, Nick, because as we know, York can suit pace and can suit. The ones that keep rolling. Um, so a juicy eleven to one for you, Nick, um, for your one point win. Happy with that? Yep. Good stuff. Katan for Nick to, to kick us off at one point win in the Skybet Dash at elevens. Uh, I'm coming to um, uh, the Romancer, John Lang. Um, can you give me your third best, please? Uh, third best is Dubai Honor in the three fifteen at York. Thought they gave Claymore that race at Ascot a, a wee bit. He had a really, really soft time of it on the front end, and I did think the farm was a little bit below par as well. Yeah. Um, I think this one's a good horse. He's been ready for a while. He's been well ended up. Uh, I think it's a good starting point for his season. I think he ought to be able to pick Claymore up. Yeah, it'd be disappointing when it entered into Eclipse and, and was, you know, thought thought worthy of that, of that being a target. But when the Eclipse turned up fairly hot, I think that the, the shirt decided he was going to um, um, avoid that and, and look yeah, for something I think, else. I think, I think this is an ideal starting point for the Irish team, up for maybe the Irish champ, you know, something like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, good stuff. 7 or 4 with Denise uh, yeah. or Billy Mountains uh, to get us off. Uh, so 7 or 4 for John for Dubiana. That's his third best. Uh, Quentin Franks, coming to you for your third best. Uh, my third best, Lee. I'm going to clash with. Uh, Nick here. I'm going with Lucky Man in the dash. Horse in question was interesting from a form standpoint. Uh, excuses last time out at Ascot on genuine firm ground. Rail played hot that day on the stand side. He ended up three to four off it and just absolutely had no chance from from that sort of position. Um, cheap piece of him in stuck on here. And David Egan replaces uh, Kieran, Sk- Kieran Skidmark. Egan's two from 11 for Spencer, 1.21 actual over expected. Low sample, but it's an upgrade nonetheless. Uh, the pieces on should help him travel better through the race. He kind of got lost mid-race uh, when he raced at York. And that, that form's just rock solid. Um, 
rock solid sprint form uh, the cox win has gone on to win a listed or group race in france has been winners all the way through the field uh, nine to one in a few places one point win good stuff yeah nine to one with uh, again denise kurtz leading the way as she always does john for uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> quentin's quentin's third best um yeah, like his reasons again. Um, it's certainly going to be an interesting race, that one. Okay, we'll uh, move on to my third best. Uh, goes in the uh, 2.25 at Ascot. It's the uh, Valiant Stakes for Phillies and Mares. And I'm sort of like puzzled at the price of uh, the uh, German horse November at 4-1. to one. Um, Some top class form last season uh, with Baid and Real World. Uh, possibly not in the same sort of form this season, but obviously does prefer a little bit of give underfoot i would i would say uh, to show her very best um but but the thing that i like here is a the price and i mean zambak the favorite that's probably about 105 uh jumbly the same around 105 uh, oscula the same they're all they're all the, the the market rivals are all much of a muchness i think on what they can achieve um whereas november's just a little bit above that and there is more digging in the ground at ascot yes yes it's still going to ride i would imagine if he doesn't turn the taps on tonight with a bit of rain forecast he doesn't turn the taps on too much or doesn't bother at all um it's going to ride good to firm but it's not the 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 royal meeting fast uh, when we had when we had a lot higher stick readings than than what we're getting uh, today today at Ascot, so I thought November I got a serious class edge because she was the only one um, to try and go with uh, that filly of Chapel Irons in the in the um, is it the, the, the is it Duke of Cambridge I can't, I can't remember but Knit race title Saffron but, Beach yeah yeah Saffron Beach um, and she was the only one to sort of like try and go with it two out and then sort of paid the price a little bit late. And if Saffron Beach was in this, she'd be about a threes on shot, maybe two to seven. So I think four to one November's great value for a one point win to kick me off uh, for Saturday. John, coming back to you for your second best. Well, we're loving this. Yeah, Red Dash. I'm in the 240 at York um, with Venturous. You, you maybe wouldn't think this place was ideal for him, but he's actually a course and distance winner. He won this last year off 95, runs off 93 here. Oh. Ran like horse approaching peak farm last time, I thought. Travelled up lovely, didn't quite get the splits when he needed, but uh, still ran with a fairly great credit, I thought. And uh, I think they must be delighted defending their title, nod to Ed Chamberlain, uh, off two pound more than last year. So I'm rocking along with Venturous. Good stuff. Are you, are you wankering or straight on the nose? I think I'll have to wank to it, I'm afraid. Okay, five. I can offer you five pegs with the the mountains firm, um, at if, ten to one. If, if that's out the first fair, Baron should sack his daughter and go back to holding the license on his own. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So ten to one for John. Five places uh, with Billy Hills uh, uh, in the dash. Three tips in the dash. Forecast and tricast. Davis, Franks, and Ling going head to head uh, so far. Okay, uh, second best uh, coming to Quentin, please. My second best bet, Lee, comes in the eight ten at Lingfield. Um, it's one of the, probably the best named horses in training, to be honest. Prenup, uh, who is by profitable and out of a mare called Intimacy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, she got she got my like Goodwood on her uh, uh, first start of the season, which happened, happened to be her third start. Uh, she was strong enough in the market that day, ridden chilly in a race that was a kind of boss from the front. Ended up more towards the unfavoured far side rail. Uh, she ended up with a marker seventy two off the back of that. Uh, pulled her chance away at Windsor when when trying to be ridden handy. Uh, trailed home last of six that day. Dropped two pounds down to a marker seventy today. Uh, it's all weather form that makes her her her, her of interest here, to be honest. Um, she ran well at Kempton on the second start, raced a, a shade freely, um, but made made a move towards the far rail, and the run just kind of petered out close home. She was thirty three to one that day. It says she needed it, and uh, handicaps were kind of going to be on the agenda. Uh, form the time of that race is fine in relation to a mark of seventy. Form looks solid. You got Zambak who's in the Group Three tomorrow. Washara, the Burroughs horse, has a mark in the mid to high eighties, I think. And the third's gone close off a seventy-five. 
drop back to seven furlong will help us settle hopefully and uh yeah it looks to be plenty of upside back on the all weather against what look a modestly handicapped bunch super easy in quentin and it's 11 to 1 with kurt lovely two uh, points win yeah two <laughs> points win 11 yeah good price um you can so yeah sponsor <laughs> <laughs> I, I, John, John, we should set up a meeting in a boardroom, yeah. um, and, and, and if we, if we, if we, Can we have the prices instead. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, want a, we want a boardroom with a glass top coffee table. Yeah, and some chloroform and some some contraband. And some stirrups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can, I can get, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to picture that. Um, Maybe a box of Senna cot as well. Yeah. Do you think she'd do like a TikTok, like with a Harlem Shake? You know, like. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fuck it, hell. Anyway, did he. (laughs) (laughs) Hasn't taken long, has it? (laughs) Anyway, we haven't even finished Best Pets. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've lost track now. Two points with prenup. Bringing up for, for, for Quentin. Um, okay, uh, I'll come to mind then now after our smut talk um, uh, going off there. Uh, it goes in the 335, the, the, the King George, and I am very keen on Emily Upjohn. Um, the Philly, I, I, I genuinely believe that she, with, with this, this is a good race. I mean, make no mistake in terms of trying to solve it as a puzzle. Uh, Westover, six to four market leader. I believe they should be closer. Emily Upjohn and Westover with the three pounds. I don't think there's a lot between them. Um, I think Emily Upjohn's got more um, tactical uh, change of pace. Uh, judge on the sectional through 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 the life of Westover and Emily Upjohn. We've seen what Westover can do. He can gallop. Uh, Mishriff, I don't think, is really a, a, as good at 12 furlongs as he is at 10. And the way he can kind of misses the breaker lately and can be a bit keen... That'll be a negative for Mishra if I think up at 12 furlongs. Broom, I think, will probably try and repeat what he did last time. Maybe Ryan might uh, decide he wants he wants the front end. He might not. But if he does get tactical, I think Emily Upjohn will have the advantage. One of the fastest times for the last three furlongs at Sandown. Um, uh, well, I think it was at 36.44 um, for the last three furlongs when she won a maiden here. Um, she's just got more gears, as in the Oaks. I, I don't think there's much between the Oaks and the Derby form, if I'm honest. The top two, Tuesday, Emily Upjohn, Westover, Desert Crown, I think there's probably not a lot between them. So I just think Emily Upjohn's the value under Luigi at 3-1. to one. If he gets her settled, I would be quite confident she would beat Westover um, if she's on her A game. So Emily Upjohn for me, two points at 3-1. to one. Nick Davis, your second best. Right, I'm going to probably go uh, against the probably one of the most overbet horses tomorrow. I think Saga will be all the rage after the the Royal meeting when you know Disori lost the ride ever. Yeah. Uh, him and the winner did come from behind. The third's one since, but the third was up there. And I'm going to take it on because I don't see that massive a lot of pace here. I would like the top one, Tempest. Really good escort form, first and third, the Hunt Cup. As I'll go to later on, is uh, being one of the <laughs> Sinjari blessing already out of that race as one. Uh, so I think Tempest hasn't been in this class for a little while, and I think this is a this is a very this is you know goes off top weight. Holly on, I think he was nine to one earlier. I think was he? He's nine to one now, Nick. Uh, Skybet uh, Hills eight 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 bet Victor. Yeah, that would do me fine. Um, interesting, really, because you mentioned Saga and being one to take on. Obviously, I might have mentioned it before on an odd podcast, but obviously I was on Saga at big prices <laughs> and was absolutely on the floor when the Luigi didn't get it up and should have won. And, and again, it's just my kind of season. But I'm in agreement with you because I, I think the £8 rise for Ascot, for Saga, is quite harsh. Um, you know that puts it on 105. That's what I actually thought it could run to when I when I when I bet it in the Britannia. I sort of looked at it and thought, yeah, you're about sort of like 105 ish that kind of. So eight pounds is quite good in the Britannia. So um, I, I think now the edge has gone 
um, at the weights. So and it's good. I think it'd be over bet. It'll be one of those that everyone's seen it. Yeah, uh, and everyone's heard about it. It'll every be in every loads of multiples and everything. Uh, agreed. Yeah, I, I mean, totally agree with you. I, I think that's one possibly to take on. Um, well, uh, they're uh, exactly the same as well, aren't they? Yeah, it, it, it's it's one of those favourites. Like like Nick says, it's probably like going to be you know like definitely all the rage because the the form's there. Um, they, they're taking the the weight off with the with the young kid. It's uh, a bet tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, it just looks so obvious that. I, but I'm not falling for it off eight pounds higher. Eight pounds, quite a lot of weight for that. Um, I, I, I was surprised to see it go up eight, actually. So, but that's probably ties in the handicappers probably looked at the form with Maljum and and other yeah. other things. As, as Betty sabbatical as Tranky then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> Betty's had enough. Betty probably sat at home and fell off a chair after after Saga at Ascot. You've probably done a hit then. Yeah, that's it. That's why. That's why she, you don't see her much. Well, that's why she didn't probably turn up. You know, it's it's it, it was definitely a, a a Luigi moment where you're thinking where he'd lost he'd lost his head. I think that week. I, I don't know what it was. He was either on the on the uh, the old Colombian or, or it was just just one of the it's just terrible week for the Tory that was. But yeah, I, I do think Saga will be over bet. So I'm in agreement. Um, with Nick for taking it on. Um, okay, we'll go on to maximum bet round, um, which is uh, I'll start. I'll kick us off. Three fifteen at York, same race as John, and um, I'm in totally agreement with John. Um, seven or four with Kurtz, Dubai honor. It's just it's different class. Claymore is not at that level for me. Claymore's a good horse. Um, I know it did it off the front end, off easy fractions, but did did. Do some good good closing fractions as well. 12, 12 second last furlong. So I respect Claymore, but not not to the respect that it should be favourite over Dubai Honor. I think Dubai Honor should be clear favourite, and um, and I think it will go off a very heavily back favourite, especially if York is currently raining at York now, um, looking outside. So I, I would think if York just get a bit a bit of moisture um, this evening, um, it could be interesting. You know, it will help Dubai Honor. I think as well on top of that. So Jabayana is a strong bet for me at seven to four. At the same reasons as John. I just think it's different gear. So I'll kick us off there with another blogger fav. John, coming to you. Uh, my best bet's also at York. And it is Dare to Hope in the three fifty, the nursery. This one made a pretty bright start, really. He broke his maiden in the first attempt and then was well bet at Ripon, but didn't handle the undulations at all. Second start, um, and then Mr. Farr he decided to send him to the Super Sprint last Saturday, where he was reasonably better. I thought uh, I could I could see why they were fancying him as well, but the actual race was a complete write-off. He completed the race entirely on the bridle. The horse never saw an ounce of daylight, not a smidgen. Um, after he missed the kick. Uh, he's quite hard to assess, but I think he would have gone close last week if he got the splits. And as a result, his rating would have gone up. I, I have to ruin with him, eh? Three points win. Uh, good stuff. Uh, 100 to 30, John. Happy with that? Fine. Right. It's interesting, you because this caught my eye for the super sprint last week, because obviously... This is a horse that beat Rocket Rodney on debut. Yeah. So it, it and it did it well as well. It really did do it do it nicely. Um, uh, the Parrot Man said it was carrying condition that day as well. Um, then surprisingly, it goes to to Ripon and gets beat by one of Chris Ferris. Like 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 what happens really this this flat season, you know. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris Ferris turns up and does you, and you're just left there like staring into space when you've had a, you know, th- when you've had a three thousand win two and a half, and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I, I get that, I und- yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Chris Ferris, yeah, Chris Ferris, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, <laughs> the ambulance mate, you know, that's a you know, it's like the old black adder scene, isn't it, with the two chopsticks up your nose, you know, and an handkerchief on your head. It's like you just, and then you're nodding backwards and forwards, and <laughs> so, so I, th- I felt like that that day, and then, and then um, the. Um, the super sprint, John, I've yet to watch, so I can't comment. So I will watch that and closely. I, it was hugely amusing if you 
dislike Mr. Fry, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jack Sherwood was... <laughs> she was people in Bolton that were absolutely pissing themselves. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, the horse was never at any point asked any sort of question. He couldn't, you know, I mean, he just had nowhere to go. It was a proper lock-up. And uh, for me, if you'd seen any sort of daylight, it had been definitely nudging the first three. Um, so it had gone up. Yeah, you know. So here we go. Uh, look for the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't can't knock it. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna catch up and watch that later on. But but um, if you if you want to watch that, John says it was very eye catching super sprint as well. So the debut would bite that up. Good nap, John. Like it. Uh, on to who should we go to next? Nick Davis, the best. Come on. Right then, right. Uh, my best bit of the day, uh, back to the Hunt Cup form. Uh, and it, you know, no surprise, it's in the uh, the seven furlong easy race at Ascot tomorrow. I'm um, going <laughs> for Aratus. I mean, this season has been a total write off. He's he pulled hard in a three runner event uh, at Leicester and saw yes. far too much daylight. He was in the centre in the Victoria Cup where the three highest draws come near side and won. And then eight furlongs, probably in the Hunt Cup, is not his, his ideal. It's, it's been great for him. I've said, bless him, Sinjari come out of him. And he was on the stand side there, and it was more up the centre. It's this pace from 14 to 21, King Sane, Russell in the line. So he should be in the better, best place tonight. I have had 14 to 1 already, and it's gone. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's done, he, Davis has done the shops. He, he's got. He's been around London this after. He's done the shops. He's he's done everybody. And now now what he's doing now? This is, he's doing a calm berry. He wants everyone to back it, and then he lays <laughs> it back there for, six, for six points to nothing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so Davis is now eleven to one with Kurtz. He can still have. He's happy enough with that. He's took the fourteens. Um, he, he's showed everybody. What 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 about a lesson in price taken there from Davis um, for Aratus? I, I must admit it did catch my eye as well. Um, not sure it's going to catch my eye at the sort of nine to one generally available. I, I just wonder if this might be a, some kind of tips the horse going out in the morning, just looking at the betting as well. It just looks very very strong indeed for Aratus. And like Nick, Nick says, it's not worked out. Is that, is, is that on the ICF line? <laughs> <laughs> The, the Amers forums, yeah, they're all on it. The Amers boys, all around London, etc. So we know how it works. Um, so Davis there with a great nap it, with Aratus. If you can get the 11s with Kurtz, yeah, take it's, it it's out. It's special money back if you want your elbow out to have windows tomorrow night offer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the three points for Davis, no messing about. If um, if John or Richmond was tipping this, they'd be having seven places because that's what they're like. But. But no, Davis is on the nose. None of this each way nonsense. Uh, Quentin, coming to you to round things up. Uh, my best bet Saturday, Lee, comes in the 1447 at Newcastle. Shabazz is the horse in question, uh, ridden by the Brazilian from Morecambe, Callum Rodriguez. Um, <laughs> he, <laughs> He caught, he caught the eye on debut in the paddock from a physical standpoint um, and he ran well from an unpromising position. St- steadily run race that day patently wasn't going to suit given he's uh, out of a Dalakani mare and uh, by free eagle. Um, decent race. Winners, winner of it's a jolly for the listed race at Ascot tomorrow. The second's pick, the third's picked up a novice and uh, I think the second was the one you liked in the uh, seven furlong race for two-year-old Chesham. Yeah. There we go. That's Chesham right. at, um, at the Royal Meeting. Um Charlie Apple, uh, Charlie Fellows even he tends to send his better ones to Newcastle he sent um, Vardream and Narcissus up there he's, he's 5 from 14 with the 2 year olds he sent 196 actual over expected mm. and uh, as you well know Free Eagle terrific record on Tapita 19 from 91 1.34 actual over expected uh, he, he's going to improve significantly for any, anything like a test of pace um, I suspect he'll get it here in a bigger field main market rival um, the Solatra Came close to naval power last time at Leicester, but stands like that Leicester isn't the place to be, and that's where the jolly was, and he was more more towards the centre of the track. Uh, race seems to be priced up on based on that he's got a bigger time figure. Uh, yeah, that that's wrong. Two to one, Shabazz, three points win. 
Interesting. He's, he's also the, the video I last watched, um, you know, after Pornhub and things like that. It was, it was the video I last watched uh, of Eddie Horse this afternoon before the pod. And I, 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 I like Shabazz. I, I think it should play. I, I like it physically. Um, mm-hmm. And what's also interesting, it's a free eagle. Free eagles. Did you mention that in your, in your analysis? Yeah. Free eagles on the old weather's good record. Yeah, cheers for yeah, listening. You did. You did. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I did. I, 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 I'm not sure. I, I was, but you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm terrible, aren't I? But yeah, free, free eagles. Obviously, all weather. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that angle. So yeah, two to one. Very solid, Quentin. Uh, love it for three points. Uh, jobby there. So that's finished the the bets round. Um, hope there we, you've got plenty of winners. Uh, to go forth, we, we do. I think we do a good weekend. A bit of bad luck, mm. a lot of seconds, etc. It's annoying lately, but but there we go. We keep we keep plugging away. Uh, so hopefully we'll do the biz. We've gone to the television action. So uh, we've got Ascot and York tomorrow. Predominantly, it's not like a TV bonanza, which I, I kind of enjoy. Uh, you get get to see less of Adele Moore and John. It's always nice to listen to her paddock that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you like uh, mine, don't you, John? Well, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, right, coming on, to, we'll do York first then. So the 205, it's the jump jockeys. Uh, I mean, who comes up with this shit? Come um, on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, had to look at, I had to look at this race just to, just to see why is this on TV, but... Uh, it's, it's, it's an odd... It's an odd is it on the card? It's, I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Because you've got a nice listed event at Ascot as well that's not on TV, just, just after the, I think it's the, the 410 race, a nice two-year-old listed race. I had to go through this so other people wouldn't, <laughs> being a handicap. <laughs> I mean, I mean, my, I mean, my, only, my only thoughts of this in the end, after sort of getting a headache, were that if you must bet, well, it, it's a five for a long handicap with jump jockey's weight, so you don't know a lot about it. So you either... Stick the one two in from the last year in a reverse forecast, Soul Seeker and uh, what was it, Santa Marnie or something like that? Or you think that, oh, my top one, Marnie James, has got form from a long time ago that none of these could ever hope to aspire to? That was Marnie yeah. to the race. Um, I always thought, like, when you got big, big uh, sort of like big weights, you need big horses. Um, just, just, just from an obvious, obvious standpoint. That, well, the you know, first two from last year carried it, and they were about three, three lengths clear of the rest. So, that's yeah. my thinking. Um, and just looking at a lot of my paddock notes in this, um, I know it would it would be favourite, wouldn't it? But but one of the biggest in terms of size would be Val de Travers of the Mick Appleby yard, Tom Skudamore. But they backed that into favourite seven to one. So I'm telling nobody nothing there, but. That would be size form. Um, <laughs> so, so <laughs> okay, <now. laughs> uh, so, so basically, it's the place for scientific analysis, isn't it? You've got the biggest matches. <laughs> Who's got the Barnsley shop? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, it's descended again into uh, rap. Terrible this. Um, what a terrible show. Um, so, so yeah, size form is uh, Valda Travers. That's my angle. Anybody else on this one? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Nothing. John Joe. I thought Manny James might run well. <laughs> Scott Dixon seems to be targeting his better sprinters at York this year. Yeah. I think this has a reasonable draw. In the, in the distant past, it ran, was it second to Dakota Gold? I think the rest have got a dream of that. Bit of back on there, Nick, yeah. And uh, 11, 12 should be nothing to a flat to like <laughs> Size form with Tom Cannon in the yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, He's not Fred Cannon. <laughs> uh, 240 race, the Sky Bet Dash. Obviously, you three's all tips, so I've got to talk about it. Jesus Christ. Mondamedge, John. What about Mondamedge's weekly run? Well, he, he missed out last week, so he probably won't be ready. He might blow up. <laughs> yeah. well, coming off a break, 14 days. We should ask listeners how many times Mondamedge will run between now and 
and sort of like the end of the year, you know, get, like we're having a big jam of jelly beans. It should be a big lucky dip. dip. And, uh, yeah, we, we should give like some bar stewards a parallel to the winner. We should have a, how many times will Monda Meds run between tomorrow a bit and like uh, DXB a few years ago, wasn't it? After the derby, you think you <laughs> run it in everything. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's actually be a great kilt horse, this Bondage, wouldn't it? A kilt would run it more. Oh. Um, <laughs> 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 the kilt, by the way? He's busy with Stale business. He has to take an odd Saturday off, doesn't he? So when there was Stale Dale. Yeah, Stale Dale. Yeah, like, like, like old Uncle Mel. 315 York, obviously me and John, very keen on Jibayana. I'm intrigued to see what Davis and Franks think of uh, of this race. I'm just I'm just sick that they haven't put Sir Busker in a, a mile handicap with Harry Davis on yet. Yeah. Crazy I mean, crazy placing, I think, for Sir Busker. I, I, I don't agree with this. He's probably, he's probably picking up loads of prize money for thirds and fourths, I don't know, but I, I'd, I'd want I want to have him. He was down to 107, five pound off, 102. He'd be competitive in something like the of oh, the Hambleton, was it? The York with the E ball meeting? Yeah. Or the only thing left. Last time out. Hmm. Finishing first. Yeah. yeah. He's not going to get that here, though. He's, he, he's pretty poor, really. It's uh, 6,700 for fourth and 3,300 for fifth. Wow. You know, it's... Uh, hey, now then, jump jockeys on the They may be expecting fathers. <laughs> 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 Quentin, any, any view on, on this? Yeah, I, I'm with you guys. I went uh, Evans, Dubai on 11 to 4, Claymore, uh, Dubai future five to one, eighteen Sabuska and fifty fifty the rag. Yeah. He's he's overpriced at seven to four, thirteen to eight. He's got the best form in the book. Market doesn't seem to want to be with him just because he's been pulled out on good to firm ground previously. Um, he, he's got form form on, like, albeit high end handicap form on like genuine firm ground on on the clock. Just too good for these to be honest. Um, he, fitness wise, I think he's ready. He's had has has. Uh, John said he's had multiple entries. Um, in terms of Claymore, he kind of beat a potential non stayer and a bit of a thinker. Uh, Ascot, you, you said there were smart closing sectionals, but still we had the run of it and it, it looked a weak affair. Yeah. I, I couldn't have anything it, six to four. Anything six to four plus is 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 a is a fair bet for me. Yeah, the, and the thing is about the ground. If people heard about the ground, it, this was fourth at Chartin in the Hong Kong Cup, and th- these are like. Proper, proper group one horses out there. Russian Emperor, um, mm-hmm. Ishiguazu, um, who, like Russian Emperor, I think, won a, yeah, it won a, won, won, a, won, a, won the Champions Cup at, at, uh, at a group one at Shartin after that. Uh, the the Jap horse, uh, Ishiguazu, was was second um, in the in the, the Kinnan uh, over there, the great massive race over there. It was like 1.3 million to the winner. That was second in that. I mean, God, look, look at this! Look at this scrap! I mean, I mean, I, if you don't, if you don't pick this up, you'd be disappointed if you were, if you, if you were Joe Buy on it. Like, I guess the, the shirt, the shirt will be bouncing for this. It's seven to four, six to four, like you said, lump on, lump on. Okay, we'll move to Ascot. We've got some racing. Interesting opener, I thought. The one fifty, the, the the Princess Margaret. Thoughts, chaps? Well. I was really interested in the one that you pointed out wanted Saster Ground last time against Lazoo, Minitonka. Yeah. Because I thought if the ground's faster, they won't take account of that. Minitonka will be a good price. Sure enough, Minitonka's a good price. But the bloody Clemmies were flying at Ascot today. Yeah, they've, they've, like, they've, if you look at the stick readings at the, at the Royal meeting and the stick readings today, you can see why Clark's do it. What they think is right. We'll, we'll stick plenty on, which he has literally every day. Chris Dickel's been barring, I think Thursday uh, or Wednesday. It was one day this week he missed, but he's been putting five mils on every day and sometimes seven and 10 mils on the straight course. Cause obviously that drains really well, but you can see that from the times today that it's genuinely probably, it's probably good ground, but just, just a little bit quicker than good, but he's probably allowing for the fact, right. So dry day tomorrow, if it doesn't rain overnight, you're going to end up with probable, probable genuine good to firm at 25 degrees drying weather. So, but mini Tonka has got a very straight legged action. So 
I, I was worried at HQ, and that was obviously one of the reasons for the bets on Lazo because it was, was well watered and loose at HQ, wasn't it? It was. I think you'd have to look at sort of first race time, first couple of race. Oh, this is the first race. <laughs> <laughs> we can do like the good old days. We, yeah. can, we can we can work the bookmakers <laughs> and put the slips in after time, John. We can have the time that we we could, you know, like the old days where you had to put the slip through with a camera. Uh, well, they, they used to uh, let Dorothy Padgett bet after racing, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 we could do that. Uh, so, no, we can't. I'll ring Denise. <laughs> Sponsorship deal for the pod, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I watched the race. The ground was obviously fast enough for Mini Tom. And I would have backed it. Can yeah. I back it? <laughs> That's all we needed to know, exactly. Uh, no, you make a good point. Uh, Lazoo sets the standard. Uh, 15 to 8 favourite at the moment. Lazoo sets a very, very good standard. She's a good fit. Oh, she's a dancer, is she? No, no, they seem to be as if as if to say this one is probably not maybe for the long longer term, but they're making hay. She's well, definitely we're, worthy. We're under meds as well, are <laughs> She's <laughs> definitely worthy of a rating. I'm not sure she had that much of a race last time. Fairly slowly run. Uh, I, 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 lo- I love Glenn Laurel. Um, I thought that was a really taking debut from Kevin Ryan's horse. Uh, Philly, he's put her in the louder. I, I think she's a really, really nice Philly. Yeah, so, we, know, we know what happens with Kevin Ryan every tenth at Dylan nicely, don't we? Well, they, they can do, but I'm not so sure with this because I don't think she had a race. She was on. She was absolutely just swinging away, N- not even asked until the sort of furlong pole and quickened away. I, I, I just don't think they run tell races. I think he's tell you else. You know, I mean, some, they run promising debuts. You think right? Yeah. Well, this next time, they run like shit. Yeah, it can can be tricky. Can be tricky with them, but but I, I genuinely like this filly. I think she's I think she's 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 got a bit of bar. I I, I think she's got plenty of ability. So I wouldn't I wouldn't rule her out. But I know I take what you're saying, John. It, it's always my reservations, uh, and the drunk on board as well. The drunk's no good, is he? I mean, you know, you don't want the drunk riding anything. He's on Stradivarius next week. The drunk, you know, you replace Luigi with the drunk. What's Nielsen doing? Anyway. Um, Quentin, Nick, any views on um, uh, the Margaret? Uh, I thought it was an interesting race. Obviously, Lazoo's the right favourite. She's got she's got the figures on the clock, but she's not. There's not much of her to be honest. As you said, like they're cracking on. Like the time is very much now. Glen Laurel was deadly impressive at, at first. Um, time modest enough, decent closing sectionals. Yeah. Uh, Royal Royal Charter wasn't a bad physical at HQ, but that form's taken knocks left, right, and centre. Palm Lily was interesting. Um, Kempton run. Beckett tends to send better fillies to Kempton, uh, but she's kind of attracted support. Uh, the one I thought was interesting was Omni Queen. Uh, she comes out with the Queen Mary. Um, she double figures 14 to 1. I think any, anything over 10 to 1 makes some sort of appeal. Um, debut form at Ascot hasn't worked out. Second got beat at Sandown last night. Um, but she shaped all right at, at um, Ascot. She kind of got. Uh, tipped heels early, was got knocked back and was was keeping on and finished with running left, I felt. Um, six furlongs should suit and uh, you know, I think 14 to 1's a shade over price. I'm, I'm going to have a small dabble on her. Hmm. Yeah, good, interesting, good stuff. Uh, Nick, any of you on this? No. No, not, no, straightforward that, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, just, just, just no. Uh, 225. Five, the Valiant. Anyone agree with me on November? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's it. That's good enough. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Quentin, Nick, John, any 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 other thoughts? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this, Nick. Nick. Nick's got a moussaka cooking, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to, he needs no, to fit chicken curry. <laughs> so if you don't mind listeners, you know, we need to crack on. Um <laughs> uh, I'm losing it. Um th- three o'clock race. Uh, th- the international um uh, six to one dark shift, the lovely grey, who loves a lovely grey. They'll be winning for women fawn in tomorrow. Uh, in the heat at Ascot, 25 degrees. If the lovely grey wins, there'll be queues all over the place for the bookies. Um, so Davis has already been in on this. Um, he, he, he loves a big handicap, does Davis, with Aratus. 
Uh, Quentin, coming to you because you you like this shit as well. That the handicaps like. Mm, uh, I don't. Truth be told, I don't really mind this one. You can kind of cut it down. Uh, pace all looks to be high. Uh, yeah, yeah I, think, I thought high. Yeah. Yeah. Pace looks high. I think Rail plays hot tomorrow, similar to the back end of the uh, Royal Meet and Stands. Uh, Rail, the going stick readings this morning kind of said that as well. But stalls are in the centre. The one, Aratas did catch the eye, but at price has ebbed away. It's ebbed away all week, to be honest. We kind of made a big move away from the rail and faded, but there's every chance of him pulling his chance away. The one for me, I think he's had this on the agenda for a while, is air to air. He snuck in at the bottom of the weights. He, I've had him on the eye, for a, as I said, for a while, but he travels strongly for his races and he's been screaming for a drop back to seven. And finally they did it at Yarmouth in a, it was a piss poor race, but yeah. they had him well entered up and it was just a case of win getting this. And this is the target. He settled. And as I think it's two furlongs into the race. I said, yeah, that's the one for the international. So um, he's eight, nine to one um, strong forms, decent figures on the clock, right side of the track. Not much, not to like, um, Nine to one. I'm, I'm going to have a good swing at that tomorrow with several of the market principles drawn, kind of middle to far side. Yeah. What, what do you, did you think? Do you think Fresh was probably not drawn well enough? Fresh, Fresh obviously was well backed, wasn't it? In the in the working. Yep. Um, what do we make of Fresh's chances? Do, do... I wasn't sure. Twelve was high enough, and maybe a bit easier ground. Yeah. yeah. Was nagging like as you said, drying day and. And all that. What were the, the times? Uh, well, the straight course seemed a bit quicker today, didn't they? It, it, yeah, the, straight, straight the course, but still, but still slow. I mean, it was it was sort of two and a half seconds the two year old races uh, to to sort of three and a half seconds. The staying races were four seconds slow. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I'd I'd say it's one of them really where it it will quicken up if they don't water, but um, it, it's not it's not Royal Ascot quick. It's not. It's not that absolute, uh, you know, rock solid ground that, that we got at the uh, at the at the June meeting. And so, be interesting, John. Any any thought any thoughts on this for you? I don't think the ground will really show for fresh. Mm. Um, and I don't. I, my gut instinct is that the triple showed the house better than the yeah. the, the working them did. Um, I think there's still a bit of scope for that one to, to improve. I mean, a lot of these are fairly exposed. Star of Orion was a little bit interesting. Um, but really bombed out last time. You can maybe make the excuse for racing over the far side and trapped out on the wing, couldn't really get involved. Um, I thought the time before the task got behind him with a parking ship quite well. That's on a reasonable mark. And... Uh, the only other one I was interested in really was King Zeno, I think, probably taking on a new lease of life for the new trainer. We've got that away from the kilt. I would actually have been trying it over a mile and a quarter. Um, poor race it was last time, but it absolutely hacked up and it looked in tremendous order. I, th- I think the boats are probably assuming, Christ, it's gone up eight. That's plenty for what it won, but I mean, I wouldn't have been shocked if it had gone up 12, to be honest. It wasn't that easy. Um, and I, I would back Roger T. Alton to get an awful lot of improvement out of a kill to us that's gone wrong, to be honest. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's still got a bit of improvement in it. No, I, I, I think that's it. I, I'd have been very interested in King's Inn. But a bit like, I suppose, like different different arguments. Saga's gone up eight pounds for second in a Britannia, um, which I thought was harsh. That's two to one. Uh, King's Inn is uh, twelve to one, gone up eight pounds for for obviously an effortless win at win at Kempton. Bear in mind that the saw above uh, prior to that uh, second to King's Inn beat Fresh, albeit over six at Kempton. Um, it, it's 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 not. I, I think you're right there. I think King's Inn needs looking at. Because, like I say, it's unexposed after leaving uh, the kilt. Exactly. We know, we know what we think about the kilt. Um, that's an interesting choice. It's got the draw choice. as well for a front runner. Like, it's got the draw. Like slap bang on that stand, stand side rail. It's, it's the, the doiler. Station on the front end. It's, yeah. it's of interest. I mean, it's going to trade low. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
Surely we should have those eight points from that there. Yeah, yeah. Fuck Davis. We're going with that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, King's in. I, yeah, I like, yeah. That's 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 the one. Uh, I, I think that could run a massive race. Get on that stands rail, Dan. That stands rail. Yes, we like that. Uh, good for him running as well when you lean out at seven to two and three to one two out. Yes. Um, three, <laughs> three, three, three. Well, at least you know the dialer will be sat there quiet even if he's hanging on to now one. Yeah, I, I don't mind the dialer at all for these kind of races. I think I think that's his that's his game for me. Sort of these these sort of seven furlong mile races. I think he's I think he's he's one of the best. I, I, other other trips, I'm not so sure, but. Seven furlong and mile races. I think he's he's good at judging judging stuff. Right. So we're gonna watch the first race and then have a bet in it. Now we've got we've got size form. So, size form at York, yeah. And we've got jockeys specialising in distances yeah. between seven furlongs and a mile. Yeah. Don't listen to Adele in that jump jockeys race. Just literally look at the size of them. Yeah. The biggest, like the biggest ones. Adele might point out the biggest if we send her an email or something. Well, I, or Ken, Ken Peterson might if they use Ken. <laughs> Ken would, I think. <laughs> You know, so yeah, there we go. Is Norman there tomorrow? Adam Norman, are you listening? Are you there tomorrow? Uh, we want to know the biggest bastard in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, so it could be interesting that one. Right, the fi- the finale, the pièce de résistance, uh, the the King George, um, Westover, strong six to four favourite. Uh, terrible that they've chucked the train driver off for Colin Keane. I, I'm not. I don't agree with this at all. Colin Keane's not better than the, the train drivers. Not. I, West Ham has got a good uh, constitution. I, I thought at uh, the car, he gave it a really forceful ride from about the home turn. He, he went about it. He wanted to win that. Oh, he, I think he hit it about seven times, and he, he was riding for a good oh, two and a half, three furlongs. It takes a bit of jout, roust in that thing, does it? Yeah, was well, it the might... backhand position, Nick. Bum? Was it in the backhand <laughs> position? <laughs> yes. Yeah, with, with Thrasher Morris. Thrasher Morris put me to bed on Twitter with his uh, backhand position. Um, the same position as you have it when you're cutting bacon up. <laughs> 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 Only on this show do you get things like this. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing for me with Westover is he's. he's like looking at how he runs and he and his times and he and what he does, he, he's he's a he's an absolute out and out galloper. You can see that, um, which Ascot should sue. But I, I I also share Nick's concerns that that I, I do believe that was a harder race than it looked in the Irish Star because because the, the the head waiter Colin Keane was so keen to to win by as far as he could. Uh, I, I I genuinely think that was that was. That was also all in at that at that point. Um, I'd be a bit worried. Uh, that's why I was obviously with Up John, um, but I'm very keen to hear everyone else's thoughts on the race because. Um, well, the mystery know, the mystery force is this is is the arc winner, isn't it? Especially if it does if they put a bit more down. That's yes. that, that's been the market mover over the last. I mean, that's the, like the mystery of Eclipse price that everyone will say, oh, it, it's an arc winner. It's it's too big. And you know they're right. I mean, they they thought novelists. Do you remember uh, about 2012, 10 years ago? They thought that they needed soft ground, yeah. And it didn't. I mean, I don't know if you trust Guyan reports that much in Germany, but but no, I'm I'm not having a bet. But that's been the sort of mystery force for this race, rather than mystery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quentin, uh, it's a puzzle of a race, to be honest. You suspect there'll be pace on. You said Westover is going to be ridden. Probably behind broom and pile drive, you'll suspect they'll want to get on with it. I, I know I'm not going to have a bet in the race. Um, Mishriff, I'm in a really strongly run race, I'm not 100% sure he fully wants 12 furlongs. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to have a bet. I, I don't want to be west over at the prices. Emily Upton would maybe be a shade over on my tissue, like. I'm not, I'm, I know I'm not going to have a bet, so I'm not going to. John, John's on a promise, so keep it short. <laughs> Uh, rate my steak, John. I'll I'll take a photo tonight. <laughs> of the steak, obviously. You know? Anything else that might be on offer. <laughs> uh, 
Um, some of these Frankels can be a bit leery, even the good ones. And I've got my doubts with this Westover. Because, like Nick said, he uh, well, he didn't quite knock the living shit out of it at the curry. He, he, he gave the house a fair old pasting. And I think it was maybe down to the fact he's running a bit lazy with him. And I think it's interesting that Rafe and Ralph decided to take the horse to Kempton for a, a day out, which for a horse that's already had three runs this season, it, it, it's not a sharpener. It's the sort of thing you do to rekindle a bit of interest. Interesting. Um, it, it's one that you wouldn't be getting away with training very well at home. It's the only reason you do it, you know. I mean, why risk sticking him in a horse box for no particular reason? Um, so, I have my doubts over Westover's temperaments. Mm, but, I, like, I, I like this. I like that a lot. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced... And I couldn't back in six to four. I wouldn't say I've got the race off pat there. I'd, I'd, I'd know what would win it. Um, you, if you can get a six to four favourite knocked out, you, you'd say there's all you fancy having a bet, wouldn't you? But yeah. it, I think this race can be tough for Phillies, and I think Will will make it tough. It leaves you mischief. You wouldn't be guaranteed to stay. No. Especially, especially in this, I think it'll yeah. be a race that does stand yeah. in there because because yeah. it'll go on with West over even uh, about three or four out, I think. And then and well, he, he, he couldn't get the better of Alan Carr last year, and Alan Carr pulled a cart for the first two, three furlongs of the race. So, like, stamina is definitely a question mark for him. And then, and then of course, when when you when you've looked at all that, you put your brains back in, and you realise there's a fucking hack winner in the race at ten to one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I can't, can't, can't knock that at all at the prices. Um, like I said, people seem to play that it definitely wants softer ground, which, look, to be fair... A bit to wash on? Yeah, like I say, this is not, this is not the quick ground that, we've, that, we, that we know Ascot to be, but uh, on good ground, um, it was second to Alpinista, uh, two lengths behind, obviously Alpinista's... Obviously, a, a genuine. You know, I mean, uh, this, this is awesome. Uh, you'd, you'd imagine he'd be able to pass Barome in the straight. You don't know what the foot West Dover's going to do, and it might you just run the finish out of the up, John. If that's the case, you're in business at tens, and it's not costing you a fortune to find out, is it? Fair play. No. Yeah, I, th- I think if I had to have a bet, it would have been that, but I'm, I don't have to. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. Good points made. Um, mm. Only reason I, I did go for Emily at John was because of uh, I, I do think she's got serious gears. In like you know, you can see from the sectional times, like, even at Epsom, it was slower run than the Derby, the Oaks, but but she she cracked off two two amazingly quick, um, you know, like mid mid ten point whatever's, and and you know at the end of the race, and I. People said at the time, they said Emily Upjohn was on the best part of the track. It wasn't the, the best part of the track. It was the, the worst track. part. As we saw on Saturday, the, they ignored the rail for some bizarre reason all meeting. They just went, no, no, we're not going down the rail. The rail ended up being the, the best place to be. And I thought Tuesday had a much better trip uh, because that went the shortest way around. So Emily Upjohn is clocking the same sectionals or slightly better than Tuesday at the quicken up points. Um, but yet, had the wider trip, had had to cover the most ground. So I think this is a really good filly. I, I think she's she's really she is the real deal. Quentin put this out. Um I know it was like pretty obvious in the Moosey Dora, but Quentin said take take the odds for the uh, for the Oaks. He's, he's top top class value. Very unlucky not to draw because I, I, I genuinely feel that Emily Up John would have beaten Tuesday uh, with a like for like trip. Um, the Irish sort of disagreed and said, "Well, Tuesday was we'll well, slowly away." This right, so we're watching races and wanting to bet after the race. Yeah, specialising <laughs> jockeys over a distance variable a furlong. Yeah, um, we want the biggest bastard in the sprint. Yeah, <laughs> and, and now we're promoting anti-post bets we advise where nobody got paid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking show. Now, this is your show. 
I mean, that, that sums that sums it more than anything. And I think if we have give, the final advice before we quit the show is um, <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is is possibly after the jump jockeys uh, sprint, uh, let the dog in and uh, <laughs> get, get the pace out and see what happens. Um, <laughs> that's, that's about it. That's the best advice the Bastards could give this weekend. So I hope you've enjoyed the show. We're back on Sunday as usual with the... Will, will John be recovered by then? John, well, this is it. The, we'll find out in find out in the next instalment. John, the promise tonight. I've got a medical team on standby. Nick. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Uh, so sermon on Sunday as usual uh, with me, John and Chris. Uh, we've got the uh, Goodwood preview Monday evening with me, Quentin, at Richmond. Fry is joining in for some Galway action um, uh, to begin with. So look forward to our pods next week, and then we're back on the Friday following with the usual show. Davis will be back for that one. So I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, like we have. That's all from us. Bye for now.